This is Hormok. And if you've had it before, you probably love this stuff. And if you haven't had it before, well, take a second and guess what this might be. Because my first bite of this was not what I expected. This is actually a curry. In fact, an incredibly rich red curry packed with lemongrass and turmeric and coconut and with egg, too. This isn't a soup, it's like a mousse or a souffle. It can be steamed or grilled, made with fish or pork or even a horseshoe crab eggs. It's one of the best things I've ever eaten. So I wanted to do a show on this dish because when we do a show, I get to eat. But it also means that we need to track down the history, and here, that meant going back. Back to the beginning of the empire, and then the one before that, and the one before that. It meant following the path of conquests and battles and some of Asia's first traders and greatest heroes. And then, going back even further, to almost a thousand years before any other dish we've ever covered. This is the story of Hormok. It's said that maybe the best hormok in Bangkok is sold about an hour northwest of downtown at a street cart in a neighborhood called Sri Yen. Here, every day, locals make a pilgrimage to try the steamed fish curry made from an old family recipe. And it's worth waking up before the sunrise to make a trip here for the famous stuff. Officially, hormok Mei Boon Ma start selling their legendary curry mousse every morning at 8 a.m., but unofficially by 7 there's already a line, and as soon as the first batch comes off the steamer, they're ready to start serving. And until the last perfect banana leaf-wrapped masterpiece is gone, it's an assembly line. It doesn't matter what day of the week it is, there's always a crowd here for what's considered one of the best places to find this dish. Here, there are four unique styles of hormok. There's the classic made with clown featherback fish minced into the curry and with fillets layered in, then steamed above marinda leaves and topped with coconut milk, chili, and kaffir lime. They also make hormok with their own homemade fish cake. There's a pork version, nearly impossible to find in here, paired with an incredibly spicy version of their curry. And there's this massive ultra hormok made with fish head. And I wanted to try all of them if I could ever actually figure out how to order. so addictive. It has like this really vibrant coconut taste, but that is way spicier than what I expected. <laughs> the interesting thing is texturally, all three of these are just totally different. Not just in terms of the meat, but in terms of the curry, you have something just outrageously spicy with the pork. You have a very mild, uh, softer, coconutty curry with the fish ball. And it's almost, it's almost peanutty what they're serving with the, um, with the snakehead fish. And it's also spicy, but it's nowhere near the pork. These are just, these are just like little works of art. This is amazing. A few weeks ago here, when we filmed a show with Gary Butler, the roaming cook, he referred to one dish as tasting of Thailand. It's a great line, and for me, it describes this stuff. This tastes like Thailand. In fact, with the intense and aromatic curry paste, coconut, turmeric, and lemongrass, river fish, and kaffir lime, it shouldn't be a surprise at all that hormok is actually considered to be the national dish. But it's not the national dish of Thailand. It's the national dish of a completely different country. 
Now here is a map of Southeast Asia. Thailand is surrounded by culinary powers and already in our six months on this channel, we've covered dishes connected to Vietnam, Laos, Myanmar, Malaysia, and Indonesia. We've even gone farther as plenty of Thai food can trace its roots to China or India or even Portugal. But somehow, not once have we talked about Cambodia, one of only four countries that actually shares a border with Thailand, a place with a history and culture every bit as impressive and influential as anywhere in the region, and worldwide a complete culinary mystery. The national dish of Cambodia is called amok tre, or fish amok, and it's hormok, it's the same thing. Now, both Thailand and Cambodia claim origin of this dish. And truthfully, it's hard to contest either claim because this is one of the oldest dishes still served in the entire world. The argument over who created Hormok is intense and personal, but it's also just the latest salvo in a war that, long before it was fought in the kitchen, took place on the battlefield in 150 years of warfare that would shape the region that we call Southeast Asia. If we could go back in time and parachute into the spot where we now live in Bangkok, what empire we might find ourselves paying taxes to might be different depending on what week we set our time machine for. Two of the greatest empires this region has ever seen Ayutthaya and the Khmer, from the late 1200s until the 15th century, were locked in an epic fight for power. The Khmers came first, building their kingdom in Angkor when Jayavarman II expelled the Javanese in the year 802 and united what had, before Java's occupation, been a loose confederation of states governed from what's now Cambodia. Ethnic Mon empires called the Funan and the Chen La shaping the region starting all the way back in 68 AD. The last Siamese power was called the Lavo, which became a vassal state to the Khmers in the 900s. But from the beginning, the Ayutthaya Empire was ascendant, growing from its foundation in 1351 to become the biggest threat to the Khmers, with their battles beginning almost from the start. Now, there's a modern school of thought that says that their rivalry in the first hundred years was more diplomatic or political than military, with both sides vying for influence instead of launching full-scale invasions. But what is clear is the influence waxed and waned before, in 1431, the Khmer Empire fell and the Siamese became the dominant power in the region. Here's the point. During that time in the 14th and 15th centuries when control of that empire pinballed back and forth between Angkor and Ayutthaya, food and culture and recipes mixed and blended and even imperial chefs were sent back and forth between the rival palaces. It makes sense that Hormok and Fishamok would both be considered ancient imperial dishes in two different empires. All that tells us is that this dish is really, really old. And if we were to get any deeper, we'd need to head to the waterways, just like the canals of old Ayutthaya, where we first find Hormok here in Thailand. In a city with an endless amount of hidden culinary secrets, maybe my favorite is this small platform at the back of a weekend market in Bang Ka Chau, the island in the middle of the Chao Praia is still covered in jungle and largely undeveloped. Here, there is something called the Culinary Heritage Zone, and it's just three vendors, each serving one dish. Three Siamese classics with roots in the country's imperial past made perfectly, with recipes passed down through generations. There's chicken green curry, miang kam, and hormok sold from the only vendor who still paddles her boat up the canal every Saturday and Sunday to sell at this market. It's here where I first tried Hormok, and that's how I began to understand not just why this dish is so widely revered, but also how a place with just one boat can get away with calling itself a floating market. This is the star of the show, 
the biggest reason why throngs of locals come here every weekend and line up for this amazing version of Hormog. แม่กับยายสอนไว้ให้ทําแบบนี้มันแล้วมันจะอร่อยปลาหมกนี่มันใช้มีปลาปลาน้ําพริกนะคะปลาน้ําพริกแล้วก็เครื่องเครื่องกะทิของมันอ่ะค่ะแต่ว่าต่างชาติมาบางคนเขาก็ชอบทานว่ามันอร่อยก็เราใช้กะทิล้วนๆน่ะก็เราใช้กะทิล้วนๆเราไม่ได้ใช้แป้งไม่ได้ใช้อะไรเลยอ่ะใช้กะทิกับน้ําพริกมันถึงได้อร่อยถามให้คนนี้เขากินประจําเลยอ่ะ When it's done right, every single spoonful is like a symphony, and I know that's a cliche, but like it's a perfect bite of food. And here, it's a masterpiece. It's the best hormok I've ever tasted. It's one of the best things I've ever eaten. And here, sold from a sampan sitting in the old canal by a vendor who traces her roots back to the Mon ethnic group, this is a piece of culinary history. There's something about hers that is softer, more pillowy. Like I would describe this as, like here. I mean, if you can see this, and obviously we'll we'll cut to this, but it's it's a very I would say luxurious dish the way she cooks it. Um, I'll say that there is a claim to be made that this is the best horn milk in Thailand. Uh, at least for what I've tried, it's the best by a considerable margin. So how do we figure out who can actually lay claim to hormok? Cambodia, where it's the national dish, or Thailand, where it's been a centerpiece of local cuisine since the days of Ayutthaya? I mean, I'm not the only one fighting this battle. It's quite a topic of argument in this part of the world. In Cambodia, it's definitively said that fish amok inspired Thai hormok. In Thailand, it's said to be the other way around. There's even a fight about the linguistic origin of the name, so it's not just foodies; it's academics in this battle. The truth is, all we do know is that this dish and the word used to describe it was most likely shared between the two empires, either by diplomacy or by conquest, more than 600 years ago. But there's one more clue that might show us that this dish is actually a lot older, even than that. There are other forms of hormok or fish amok than just the steamed version. In fact, if you take more or less the same dish but grill it rather than steaming, you can start to see traces of hormok throughout Southeast Asia, way beyond just Thailand and Cambodia. In Laos, that dish is called mok pa, and it's almost the same thing but made with, of course, sticky rice milled into flour, more commonly steamed today but grilled by tradition. Along the Strait of Malacca in Indonesia and Malaysia, it's called otak otak, and it uses tapioca starch as a thickener. Now, wrapping something in a banana leaf and then grilling it—that's so ancient in Southeast Asia, it might as well be called prehistoric. That's as old school as it gets. It's said that otak otak was first developed in the ancient days in Palembang, and then spread across Indonesia and Malaysia. But remember, the Khmer Empire deposed the Javanese, and even after taking power in the year 802, the Khmers kept a close relationship with the so-called island Southeast Asia. Endless dishes and ingredients were shared between the two kingdoms between the year 700 and the 15th century. But as for when this dish first appeared, well, we can try to narrow it down a bit by looking at one more kingdom, the Lan Sang. The root of modern Lao. This empire was founded by a regional Lao prince who'd grown up in exile at the palace in Angkor. When he established his own kingdom, it was heavily influenced by the Khmers, and it's likely how mok pa became a Lao dish. That dish, by the way, seems to have come back into Thailand as something called eb pla. It might seem crazy to even try to untangle food history going back this far, but you can start to see how interconnected so much of Southeast Asia really is. Anyway, if that's all true, it means the grilled version of hormok, at the absolute minimum, is more than 700 years old, and quite possibly dates back as far as the 7th century. คือย่างนี้เป็นต้นกำลัง
กินแล้วมาเป็นของของสมัยก่อนไงลูกบางคนก็ชอบคนของสมัยก่อนไงแต่ส่วนมากก็ต่อรับได้ดีนะป้าขายดีทุกวันเขาถามว่าทุกวันนี้เขาขายดีไหมแต่ของป้าขายดีทุกวันลูกค้าก็เขารับดีทุกวันมาลักใส่กล่องใส่เป็นกล่องอะลูกแล้วก็ทุกวันนี้เราก็ส่งทั่วประเทศส่งทั้งจังหวัดส่งเมืองนอกส่งหมดเลย This is Madame Sri Sampeng, and speaking about empires, hers might be the most unassuming one in Thailand. This street cart is one of the only places selling grilled h o r m o k in Bangkok, and from these humble beginnings, her shop, m a y Sri, now sells her family recipe to all corners of Thailand, with thousands of her famous parcels picked up every morning or evening and delivered to markets and vendors as far away. As Chiang Mai, this street stall operates 24 hours a day, as does her other street stall and half a dozen roving vendors who walk through Bangkok's busy streets selling this with rice and a boiled egg, all topped with chopped chili and fish sauce, and all for about 45 baht or roughly a dollar thirty. ลูกชาก็คือเหมือนกับเราใส่พริกแกงนั่นแหละลูกใส่พริกแกงกะทิเครื่องกวงสำหรับเราทำห่อมงไงมันก็มาพริกแกงก็รสชาติเดียวกันเราจะแต่งต่างที่เนื้อปลาไข่แมงดาแล้วก็เนื้อปูจ้ะแค่นั้นเองลูกคนจีนชอบกินกุ้งปูปลาอีสานคนลาวขมิ้นพวกนี้ก็ชอบกินแมงดาชอบกินปลาหมึกพวกนี้จ้ะลูกแต่เราชอบกินอย่างนี้มากกว่าอันนี้เขาเรียกว่าห่อมหมูย่างมันจะหอมหอมใบตองหอมข่านอันนั้นคือเหมือนกับเอากะทิรวยหน้าเฉยๆอ่ะอันนั้นใช่นึงเวลาเราพูดถึงอะไรที่อาจจะเป็นความจริงที่มีชีวิตมากกว่า 2,000 ปีแล้วมีแน่นอนว่ามีการทดสอบที่มีการทดสอบที่มีการทดสอบที่มีการทดสอบที่มีการทดสอบ Especially in this case, as the country at the hub of this story, Cambodia, has pretty much no written records at all about anything. That's a product of the four-year reign of terror by the Khmer Rouge in the late 1970s, when so much irreplaceable knowledge was lost forever. But since we have no choice but to guess, here's mine. By the seventh century A.D. at the latest, Khmer settlements in what's now Cambodia were wrapping minced fish with aromatics in a banana leaf and grilling it over a fire. This dish, or something like it, spread along with the ascendant empire, landing in island Southeast Asia and what's now Laos in Thailand. But that doesn't mean that Thailand's claim to Hormok doesn't also have merit, because this version, the steamed one, the dish known as fish amok. Well, steaming, at least in this part of the world, spread through the Chinese, and nobody brought more Chinese techniques to Southeast Asia than the Ayutthaya Empire, which imported Chinese chefs and sent their own palace cooks to study in Canton. We might not have written records from 15th century Khmer chefs, but we do know that in Ayutthaya, cooks were preparing Chinese dishes in bamboo steamers. It would stand to reason that at some point between the 1300s and the end of the 1400s, when Ayutthaya and Angkor were taking turns conquering each other and capturing palaces and libraries and cooks, someone had the idea of taking this combination of minced fish and spices, wrapping it in a banana leaf, adding egg, and then steaming it. Anyway, who the heck knows? But it's always fun to get far enough down the rabbit hole to at least start to speculate. Both Thailand and Cambodia lay claim to this, and why wouldn't they? It's almost a perfect dish. It's rich and intense, and packed with all the bounty of Southeast Asia. It's humble enough to find its street carts, and elegant enough to be served to kings. And the crazy thing about it is, both of these great kingdoms might actually be right. The one thing we do know. Is that whatever clash of cultures and empires that took place over the centuries here in Southeast Asia, today in Laos, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and Cambodia, we get to enjoy the results. Subscribe to the channel for more from OTR. Thank you so much to everyone supporting us on Patreon, and keep an eye out for videos exclusively posted there. 
Jasper and I are doing question and answer sessions on Patreon as often as we can. And for everyone, check the links below for our website and social media.